Hello everyone, welcome back to Body Haven Soaps. My name is Darlene and I am the owner and creator of Body Haven Soaps. Today's video, we are going to go over the much requested recipe of bath bombs. It's one of those things that, I, th I don't know, I think everybody struggles with. I know I did. Um, at the beginning of all of this, when I decided I was gonna start making bath bombs, you know, I would try a recipe one way, try a recipe another, and I would have crumbling bath bombs. I'd have white warts all over my bath bombs. I'd have expanding bath bombs as they were drying. I, you know, we've all been through all of those experiences. At least I know I have. Um, through all of that, um, you pick up little what works, what doesn't work. You know, I try a few recipes and then I push it aside for a while and then I'd come back to it again and then I would try a recipe here, try and change it here and then I'd get frustrated and push it aside for a while, come back to it and after a number of times doing that um, I finally figured out some tips and tricks that work for me and hopefully I can pass some of these on to you. So today's recipe we are going over the cocoa butter bath bombs I do make several types of bath bombs now just depending on what I'm going for in the bath bomb and I do have a wide variety of different types that I do and I can bring you more videos later on if you like this video um, so you can look forward to that coming in the future but for today, we're going to go over the, the cocoa butter bath bombs. Now, this is a very luxurious bath bomb. So there is a fair bit of luxury oils in it. Um, we've got hardeners in it. We've got uh, the two main ingredients, obviously, um, baking soda and citric acid. And the steps that we add these and how we go through this and the humidity and everything like that plays a huge role in this. Okay? So... As we go through the video, I will share the tips and tricks for this recipe as we go through. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video, but let's get to it. Okay, so to start off with, we're going to quickly go over your coloring options. Now, you have your water-soluble dye that comes in a powdered form, which is my preferred way to color my bath bombs. You can also buy your water-soluble dye. Now, I got this from Fizz Fairy, and essentially all this is is this already diluted into water so obviously that shortens the shelf life of this um, simply because there is already water mixed in it so this has a very short shelf life and it also limits how much color you can put in I mean you can put a ton of color in but if you get too much in there you're gonna have a lot of water in there and that's gonna activate the reaction in your bath bombs and it really it's just not my preferred method to buy uh, this. This I ac accidentally clicked on and got the wrong thing. Um, and I do use it in a few other things, but it's not something that I would use in my bath bombs. Um, and because it already has uh, water in it, of course, there is a shelf life on that that's a lot shorter. This being a dry powder um, form, and I get some from Fizz Fairy. Um, this one here I get from Breaking the Mold and it's Misty Peach is what we're going to use today, but it's a water-soluble dye. Now you could use micas, um, you could use lakes, but you have to really watch um, when you're using those that you are actually using things um, that are safe with mucous membranes. Remember, this is going to go into somebody's bathtub, so you do not want something that creates irritation or rash. So I would not use um, any of the neons, for instance, just because of some of the ingredients in them. Um, neons probably wouldn't be one that I would use for a bath bomb. Um, and different things like that. So make sure you're aware of what you're putting in your bath bombs. Now, I do use mica in my bath bombs, but the reason I would use mica in my bath bombs is simply because with the water-soluble dye, the problem we run into is if the sun is making contact with them for a period of time, and it actually doesn't take that long, the color of the bath bomb actually fades. So when we use just a water-soluble dye, and if that color begins to fade, well, we've obviously, they're not gonna look that pretty. And whatever that color fades to from the sun, that's what's gonna disperse in the bathtub. So we can lose some of that color. So sometimes I will use the water-soluble dye because it will color the bathtub water the best. 
um, but I will put a little bit of mica in it as well to make sure that that fading doesn't occur. It still has that nice color um, over the shelf life of my product. So that's a, t that's a little trick there, you guys, is use the water-soluble dye because it does color um, the bath water a lot nicer than mica does, but we can use a little bit of mica to make sure that our bath bomb stays a nice color through its entire shelf life. All right, so that's how we do this. So I don't really like to add a lot of water into my bath bombs. So what I do is I have just five grams of water here, just a tiny little bit. Um, so that is like, what percent does that work out to? So that's like 0.2% in this whole recipe. Okay, so it's a very small amount of water and we'll use this to bloom our dye and then put it into our baking soda to bloom our baking soda. Um, but you don't need a lot and the more water you get into your bath bombs, the more likely you're going to have problems with it. You are going to need a small amount of water to help with the hardening process, but a very, very small percentage. Okay, so use as the least amount of water you possibly can. Okay, like I said, 0.2%. That is what we're using. So I'm just going to get this balloon. Now you're going to use five grams of warmed water. Okay, so we have five grams of warmed water in here. Like I said, 0.2% of the total batch is the smallest amount of water you possibly can. We're going to take our water soluble dye and we're going to stir it into this and I'm just going to use, uh, I don't measure my dye you guys, um, I'll put it in there till the color is achieved of what I would like. So I'm going to stir this in there and just let this all dissolve and this will stain stuff okay so make sure that you've got paper towel and everything down because it will stain your counters things like that. Um, that's why I use a popsicle stick, but we're just going to stir this in until it is all, you don't see any more lumps in there. And actually just leave that sit for a minute. Well, that balloons. Leave that there for a minute. I use my mixer. Now you could absolutely do this recipe without a mixer. That's not an issue. Um, even though I do use the mixer, I do like to sift my dry ingredients simply so I don't have any of those white lumps, things like that. Um, when we do mix it in the with the mixer and start to bloom the baking soda, the likelihood of that does decrease, but I still put it through the, the little sieve here just to make sure. So I'm simply going to take my baking soda Now you guys can see how much dust that creates. Um, you really should wear a mask, a dust mask, when you're doing this. I'm not today so that you guys can hear me and yeah, I can taste baking soda. You really should wear a dust mask when you're doing this. Okay, so that's been all sieved through. Once we have it, like that. I'm not putting anything else in here but my baking soda. I'm going to put my little mixing arm on. And then we're going to take a look at our color here. And then I'm going to take the, the color that I have and I'm going to put it in here. Um, and I'm going to allow the water to mix into this baking soda and just disperse evenly so I don't have any reaction later. And I do have a dehumidifier running in here. I suggest that you use one. I'm, you know, humidity and the environment you're in really makes all the difference when you're making bath bombs. So I run mine at about 38. I have it off right now so that you guys can hear me. I will turn it on as soon as I'm done this video, but it really does help for a successful bath bomb. So we're going to pour this color in, okay? 
And a little trick that I have to make sure I don't waste any of the color is I just spray a little rubbing alcohol in there. And I get most of that color right out of there. Okay, and um, we're just gonna turn this on and we're gonna let this mix until this is thoroughly mixed through. Now, I'm just gonna quickly mix this so it starts mixing around. Okay, so while this color is mixing through, I'm going to melt down my butters and oils. I forgot to tell you guys how much baking soda. So there's 1,276 grams of baking soda, and then I have the five grams of water and how much ever color you want for the achieved color um, of your bath bomb, okay? So five grams of water, 1,276 grams of the baking soda. We are going to start melting our butters. So we have two butters that I put in this. Uh, we have our cocoa butter, okay? And our cocoa butter is 28.3 grams, and I've just used the wafers here. You could um, use, you know, organic or whatever cocoa butter you want. I like using the wafers. They melt, and they're a little easier to weigh. So I have 28.3 grams of cocoa butter, and then I have 56.7 grams of the shea butter. So as I said, this is a very luxurious bath bomb. There is a lot of butters and oils in it. The butters and oils will not activate the bath bomb because you need water to do that. It has to be aquatic. This is oil-based. And the cocoa butter, the thing that I like about that is it actually helps to harden your bath bomb and give it that nice smooth texture. So I'm just gonna take my cocoa butter and I'm gonna put it in here. And I'm just going to put this into, I know I don't use the microwave that often, but I will use the microwave for this. Um, you absolutely could do this on a double boiler, but I'm just going to put it in the microwave um, just until it's almost melted and then I will stir it to finish melting it, trying to control the temperature as much as I can. So this is gonna to continue to mix and get the color that we're looking for while I melt these. Okay, as you guys can see, this has turned into a beautiful, I don't know, dusty rose. It's called a dusty peach, but it's a nice, a nice peach color. So the fragrance that I'm going to use um, is going to be peach champagne. Um, so we are going for the peach color. Now, if you feel this, you will see like just with that small amount of water, right? I mean, it's really crumbly because we don't have anything else in there yet but it does start to pack. That small amount of water is all we needed to achieve that. So now that we have this here and I have my oils on butters all melted down, I am going to add in a little bit um, of the golden peach mica. I got this from Windy Points um, just to prevent any of that fading and make sure the color stays throughout the whole shelf life. You do not need a lot of this. It's just enough to add the color. So I'm going to put in, I don't know, a little scoop. I don't like using just micas because I don't find it gives that really nice, um, gorgeous effect in the bathtub to when we just use a mica. Mica doesn't just dissolve into the water. It kind of will disperse um, where you get flex in and out but it's not going to actually color the water like a water soluble dye um, and make sure whatever mica you're using is safe to use in the bathtub okay i'm just going to give this one more quick mix Okay, and you will notice once we start to get the oils and stuff in here, this color will darken. I don't want it 
um, really colored more than what it is now because it is going to darken with the oils and stuff like that that we're putting in there. Okay. All right. So now that we have that mixture where we want it, we are going to add in our other powders. And once again, I am going to use um, the little sieve to make sure that my powders um, do not leave any of those little white lumps in my bath bombs. So we're going to take the little screen here and um, we're going to take our little screen here and we're going to put in um, our clan and clay. Now clan and clay is one of those things that well, you guys know that I love using clays um, but it does help to harden the bath bomb and it really does give the bath water a very luxurious feel to it. And it's very softening to the skin so I love using this. You can use uh, French pink clay. You could use all, uh, multiple different clays so the options are open to you but this is the clay that I'm going to use. Um, and as far as the clay goes, it's 28.3 grams. So I'm going to put that in there. The other thing that we are going to add in here um, is going to be the cream of tartar. We're going to add in the cream of tartar um, because this is our hardening agent that is going to keep this bath bomb nice and hard and firm for a long time. All right, so the cream of tartar. Um, 28.3 and another thing cream of tartar also does um, is it really does help with the reaction of the baking soda and the citric acid together it actually will add to that and you'll get way more fizz out of your bath bomb so cream of tartar is one of those things that I love to add and I add to all my bath bomb recipes okay so 28.3 can and clay and 28.3 cream of tartar and we're just going to make sure we get all the little lumps out of that so that I don't have white lumps through my bath bombs. All right, so that's in there. And I want to disperse that through the whole thing prior to um, adding in any more liquid ingredients. So there's one more in powder ingredient that I'm going to add. And that is going to be the SLSA. Now, SLSA is one of those things that is completely optional. You do not have to put it in your bath bomb. These will still fizz and color the water and make things wonderful. I like putting the SLSA in there um, because it kind of helps to disperse the fragrance oil in the water and the color through the water. And it helps to prevent um, the staining um, of the bathtub using the water soluble dyes. You have to use something um, polysorbate 80, but this also assists the poly, a, a polysorbate 80 to make sure that the dye doesn't stick to things and there's not oil rings around people's tubs. Um, and it actually, when it fizzes, it gives kind of that little bit of froth um, that gives quite a nice design to the bath bomb. We are not using a lot if you use too much, it's just going to be this foam ball in the bathtub and it's not going to look that pretty. So watch how much that you use uh, when you're developing a recipe. But for our SLSA, we have 14 grams. Okay, so that's not even 1%. It's a very small amount. It is just enough to help disperse the fragrance oil and the color around the tub and add some of that little bit of foaming and give a better um, reaction or design in the tub, okay? So I'm gonna put this back on here and I am going to mix. That in there really well. Okay, so at this point now, um, this is your dry ingredients and you can absolutely make a batch of this and have this as a base recipe um, for this color and no fragrance in it or anything else and you could pull this out in a certain amount of measurements and make 
multiple different batches when you need those batches. So you could make a huge batch of this and set this aside and come back to it later. And sometimes I'll do that, especially if it's more of a humid time of year, just because whatever water I've put in there now will have evaporated by the time I come back to it and I have less likelihood of these bath bombs um, reacting after they're molded. But we're gonna keep going here. So we have all of the dry ingredients in there except for our citric acid, which I always add at the end just to prevent any reaction. But this recipe also has um, Epsom salts in it. Now Epsom salts, I do not use it in every bath bomb I make. And you definitely want to watch how much you use. You could use sea salt, um, you know, you could use Himalayan salts, but I would stay away from like dead sea salt and things like that. They tend to attract moisture and that's what we don't want to happen to our bath bombs. Um, slightly more than your Epsom salts or your Himalayan salts. I like putting a little bit of Epsom salts in, in this recipe with all the oils just because I feel that it adds to this bath bomb, but I'm using a very small percentage. So we are using 142 grams of just regular old coarse Epsom salts in here. So we'll put that in and give it one more mix. Okay, so you can see that this has already become powdery. It's not even sticking together anymore like it was before. And we've lost a lot of that moisture, so that's perfect. All right, so now we're going to add in our oil. So in here, as I said, we have our cocoa butter and we have our shea butter. So 28.3 grams of cocoa butter and 56.7 grams of the shea butter. We're going to put this um, in there and mix that in really well. And then the other oil we're going to add, and you could choose whatever oil you want for a liquid oil. I am just using apricot kernel oil because I have the cocoa butter and the shea butter. I don't need to add in um, some really expensive liquid oils, but this is just um, almond oil, sweet almond oil. And for that, we have 28.3 grams, okay? And that will be our liquid oils. And you can pick whatever liquid oil, but you can't change the ratio of the butters um, and the oil. So you can exchange whatever butter and oils you want here, and you can exchange your liquid oils here. Um, the only thing you can't that is not interchangeable is gonna be your cocoa butter in this recipe because that is part of our hardening. So you have to use the cocoa butter, but you could change the shea butter for mango butter or um, avocado butter, whatever you're looking for. Okay, so now we've got those butters well incorporated into there. We are going to add in our fragrance oil and our polysorbate 80. So when you are using a water soluble dye, you need to use polysorbate 80. If you do not want to use polysorbate 80, um, you will have to go with a mica because you will dye people's tubs and everything else. The polysorbate 80 allows the dye and the fragrance oils to disperse into the tub. Um, with fragrance oils and so many butters in here, if we didn't use the polysorbate 80, we would have little grease blobs all through the tub, making the tub surface slippery. The dye would also stain people's tubs, hair, different things like that. Um, the possibility is there for sure. And also fragrance oils or essential oils, whatever you're choosing to use in your bath bomb, 
it doesn't allow those oils to disperse in the water and that can be hazardous causing skin irritation and things like that so polysorbate 80 um, is going to be our emulsifier for our oils into our bath water and we are using 28.3 grams of polysorbate 80 in this batch fragrance oil um, we are using 34 grams of fragrance oil and I am doing the peach champagne in here and we mix that in and we're gonna wait mix this for a few minutes and let that mix really well in there okay so as I told you that was going to darken up quite a bit you can see this is holding together really well there's quite a bit of oils in this this is definitely a more um, dense bath bomb it's going to be heavier um, but it does not activate and it's very luxurious with all those butters and oils in it we have one more ingredient to add into here and that is going to be our citric acid and for our citric acid we are using 568 grams of citric acid Okay, we'll mix this in and then I'll show you one more trick and we'll start molding these. Okay, so now that we have it like this, see it's nice now that that's in there. We are going to add in some rubbing alcohol. Now I choose to use rubbing alcohol rather than witch hazel or anything like that. Uh, witch hazel actually has quite a bit of water content in it. And if I use 99% um, rubbing alcohol or 91% will work as well. There's a very small percentage of water in it. I can add the rest of the moisture I need to this um, and alcohol will evaporate within the 24 hours so it doesn't activate um, that bicarbonate and either citric acid, okay? So we're gonna pour this in and stir it one more time and then we will stir, start forming. Okay, so you can see the nice mixture that we have. It crumbles, but it does stick together. And it is a nice color. Now we are going to make this into um, my heart mold, which is right here. And because I am making the peach champagne the decorations that I put on here these are some um, decorations that I have ordered from Fizz Fairy um, in one of my orders and it looks really nice on the top of these um, peach champagne so I just like to take a few something like that I'm not sure if you guys can see in there um, a small amount And we'll begin to fill our mold so another thing I find people do um, is they tend to overfill their molds you ever wonder why your bath bomb sinks to the bottom of the tub and then it doesn't really float it's because it's too heavy you need to have some air in there so to say so it's not packed solid like a rock and if I overfill this or if I'm using the hand molds with things and I overfill it to where I'm trying to squish it and stuff coming out the side those usually break and fall apart and they sink to the bottom of your tub they don't dissolve well so you want to make sure that you loosely pack this and you could weigh amounts so that you have exactly the same size ones every time I just lo loosely pack this to the top I go around like so and I leave it with just a little bit of a bulge on the top. Okay, I'm gonna take this part of the mold, press it down, and I do have a hand press that I use, but with this heart one, I don't find that I need it. I can simply just put a little bit of weight on it, and that's how easy that is. Just going to push this out clean away all the edges 
And you can see if your Saturn ring is too big, you can make these smaller. Sometimes you may have to tap with these ones because there is quite a bit of cocoa butter in them, but they turn out quite nice. I just have a tray here that I have lined with parchment paper that I will take these out of the mold. Like so, and I will allow these to dry. And we'll just keep making them. Okay, so these are the peach champagne bath bombs. Um, this recipe made 12, 13, and a little bit, which I'll use in my bathtub. I just pressed it in there. Um, very simple recipe, easy to use. There's lots of butters, and when that cocoa butter hardens, it's going to hold these together um, really well. So just remember the tips and tricks. I'm gonna let these dry for about 24 hours, but I hope you guys enjoyed and have a great day.